Welcome everyone. Mate talk time, bada bing boom, we're ready to go. Um, hope you have an awesome drink. I do. Actually, I was recently at, because I just saw it now, I'm going to tell you about it. I was recently at my Lebanese uh, store where I buy my yerba mate. Walk in and there's this massive tray of this. Now they're celebrating Ramadan. I gave it an extra spin of the eyes. I don't know if you meant to say it like that. Anyway, they were celebrating Ramadan. Um, and uh, I saw this and it is magical. I cut myself, I, I bought myself a large slice of it. I've been eating it every morning. Now, the, the scent profile of this is this wonderful orange blossom with this pistachio sweetness to it. Magic. I don't know what this is called. I, I just saw it and I thought that looks good. I'm like, come here, slice. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm not going to eat it now because otherwise I'm not going to be able to concentrate. But as soon as I say, see you guys all on the next month to talk, that baby is history. Um, but uh, so any other suggestions for Ramadan that's happening right now, let me know. I will go find it and I will sacrifice my mid riff line, my stomach for the goodness of that because I'm a good guy. Um, all right, let me just show you. I've been testing. One question that I get asked quite regularly on the channel is um, how can I, as the people are asking me, how can they uh, learn different notes in fragrances? I asked this very question of Mel Fushuni when I was with him. The, the obvious answer is go to a perfumer. And I know this, it's, it's always, it's obvious but stupid at the same time in my response because sure, you know, because we got perfumers around the corner. Uh, when I was with Mayo, I said, how do you know all these notes? He says, well, I just practice, you know, I just grab, you know, a particular, like a, a different range of vetivers from Java or from Haitian and other locations and then smell the difference. And that way he understands what each of them do. So I don't have a perfume around the corner. Instead, what I do, there are certain brands that actually celebrate the singularity of the note. The best one, in my opinion, is Paris Monte Carlo. They actually center the, the core fragrance around that note. So whether it be patchouli, nosy bee, from nosy bee itself, yada yada. So I, I have a very healthy collection with all, with all things Paris Monte Carlo. So that's a really good way to understand what does bergamot smell like because you know we smell bergamot in fragrances you get a citrus feel to it but what does bergamot actually smell like if you get the bergamot from bergamonti calabria <laughs> i think that was the right place anyway i'll put it here uh you get a, a very good sense of what bergamot smells like another company is mattia premier the difference with mattia it is an interpretation of that i'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second but another company that I'm actually exploring is called Obvious. Now I got this sample set. The sample set is awesome. This is a great way to discover this house, by the way. Um, and they also celebrate the singularity of a note. So a rose or vanilla, I mean, vanilla is pretty obvious, but a rose, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, iris. Now this one here, I converted into a, into a spray so that I can spray it on me. I've been wearing this the last couple of days. It smells amazing. I cannot, I'm wearing it today, but I cannot smell it because I am covered in perfume with what I'm about to share with you. This is a very sublime wood fragrance. So this is en bois, en bois, en bois, en bois, en bois. <laughs> um, and it's the, the cleanness of the wood fragrance. So sometimes you get sandalwood, which has a creaminess and all these sort of components. This on the other hand is uh, dry wood-like. It does have like a black pepper, so you can detect that sort of that dry black pepper on the opening. It does have a papyrus, a very dry note, and then it does that have that cedar-like quality, which gives it that sort of forest element to it. As a wood fragrance, so if you like wood-like uh, uh, perfumes, spectacular. There's not much more in the sense that there's no vanillas and no, all these other sort of elements. It's a beautiful, aromatic, wood-like fragrance that is unisex. So Sandra was wearing this. I asked her to test alongside me. My son has also worn this fragrance, also enjoys it. So comfortable fragrance for anybody to wear. Uh, so if you want to also practice on your what your notes are like, I would recommend to you Obvious as a brand. Very good. I'm gonna, I'll be talking more about them. I actually got, I'm gonna create um, uh, some 
episodes on that singularity of the note and how to explore it better, both with Paris and, I, and as I said, I'm looking for these guys to see if they could also be part of that, that lineup. Give me one second while I have a little drink, boom. Okay, moving on. Um, on last Monday, we did the NFC Live. This is now gonna be a thing. All right, so I was not feeling well. I was actually quite, at the start of the, uh, the live, I did mention that I had a croaky voice. I had actually lost my voice on the weekend and I was trying to nurse it ready for the live. I was trying to keep, trying to minimize the amount of speaking I was doing. Um, I wasn't feeling very well. However, the live was gonna happen. I was not going to change that at all. So know that end of the last week of every month, live will happen and I, I was look, I was not feeling well, but I was super excited. I was very excited about having, uh, making that happen. Um, at that live, I want to thank Mike. So Mike is one of the members of the channel. He took time off from work. So thank you for the sacrifice of doing that. And he went, uh, took us through all things PDM. He has a massive or a great uh, PDM collection. I was able to get samples of all those PDMs and I was able to uh, actually experience them alongside. So if you missed that live, here's the episode and you can actually reel back into it. If you are a member and you would like to be spotlighted, it will happen in April, I think it's 21, 22, yeah. So Sunday 21st for USA and Europe and Monday the 22nd, this side of the world in, um, oh boy, yeah, this side of the world. The only thing I'm gonna change is that unfortunately I'm gonna make it a little bit earlier. So sorry Aussies, I do apologize. And also Vera from Singapore, sorry. I mean, Vera got up at five in the morning, I think it was for it. So I salute you Vera for your commitment. Thank you for being there. It was actually wonderful to see your name pop up. Um, but I will make it earlier. So this does make it a little bit earlier for Central Europe. Um, so anyway, bottom line is 8 a.m. So next, next month it will start at 8 a.m. And if you want to be a spotlighted member, talk about something that you like. But we'll talk more about that as we come along. But uh, yeah, if you already, if there's somebody out there that would, would like to be spotlighted, let me know. I'd love you to have, I'd love you to be on that next live. All right, let me talk about, okay, before I go into announcements, let me have a little drink, just a little baby drink. Okay. The last thing I was gonna say, the ambois, the um, five or six hours. So like I said, I can't smell it today but I was getting comfortably five or six hours yesterday. I was wearing it in, I did a number of meetings yesterday. I could smell it beautifully on me. I, at no stage was I ever nervous and so nothing sort of popped. You know, sometimes when I feel like if I get nervous or that cold sweat fragrance accelerates more on my skin. Um, but all day, all day long, this beautiful wood-like, clean, crisp, uh, fresh uh, wood-like scent was on me. Just glorious, really beautiful, perfect. Anyway, um, bim bada boom. Okay, so, over the last couple of months, oh, sorry, over the last couple of weeks, um, there's been an acceleration in the subscriber growth. I wanna thank everyone coming on board. If you are new to Mate Talk, welcome. This is an uncut, one complete role. So um, sometimes it's fantastic, sometimes it's a bit of a train wreck, and, but that's also exciting because you as the viewer, you're like, oh, we've just derailed. I wonder where this is gonna crash. Um, so I do my best to try to keep everything in, uh, intact. Uh, but it, yeah, it's one continuous role and it's a chance for me to, for you to see the real Marcelo basically, you know, the, un, the uncut version. Uh, so you see the personality, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Um, well, not so good in the sense that I make so many mistakes. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, one thing that I do that you may not be aware of is that I have a uh, separate business alongside Kevin, a gentleman who owns a boutique here called Oligarch. We do luxury fragrance tours. So if you are new to this conversation, we did a tour last year in September. We went through France, we experienced Paris, and then we went down to Grasse. We're doing a tour again this year, and it will be in September, eight day tour. It is about luxury, so it does. So the cost is $15,000. That does include your accommodation, your food, and all transfers plus activities as you are venturing along with us. We'll start in Paris, we go to Monaco, and then we finish in Grasse. Now, one of the things that we experienced last time around is that oh, we, we finished in Grasse because Grasse is the, um, the birthplace of perfumery when it comes to the extraction of oils for Europe. This is where they 
uh, the technology of oil extraction accelerated essentially, which then fed out back into Paris and all the perfumeries that were there. We're going back to experience that history. Last year when we were there, we went into the town of Grasse to experience the, the I guess the, the beauty of this beautiful place. And it was pure serendipity that they had a farmer's market at the time. One thing that we is part of the tour is that yes, we want to experience everything about perfume and uh, you know visit with uh, incredible perfumers, etc. But it's also about the joy of travel. It's also about really good food. And at this farmer's market, there was a gentleman with oysters from all around that region. One thing that I didn't know is that France is famous for its oysters and its diversity of oysters depending on the coastal line. In my very bad French, I was trying to remember how I said it, I can't remember now. In my very bad French, I said to the gentleman, because he didn't speak English, I said to him, um, yeah, uh, Avril, uh, Avril, I, know, I think that was meant to be open, by the way. Um, and I'm doing this sort of, he goes, oh, and he's like, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. He goes, would you like me to shuck them? I mean, he said it in French, but I understood it to be, would you like me to shuck them? One thing that I'm a big fan of, if it's oysters, if they're already shucked, I'm just gonna give you a little warning. Sometimes I go to some retail places and you see this tray of oysters in glad wrap, already shucked. I don't know, but the, the, the answer is no, okay? So they get good fresh oysters, they gotta be shucked for you. Have a look at this. Look at the look at the ocean coming out of these particular oysters. Anyway, so he shucked them for us. Uh, Kevin and I, in this the serendipity of this moment, and he was walking around, discovering the farmers market, discovering this gentleman who then we were able to experience these oysters in this spot in this moment. You know, it's like that Mastercard commercial. You know, you can pay for this, you can pay for that, but this was priceless. This was. You know this moment here this moment in time and i have to say hand on my heart that uh, i look forward to going back to grass and hoping that there will be that farmer's market because i think well i know that i didn't eat enough actually i bought a tray and kevin and i shared i regret that to this day we should have got one each we should have got one from different regions um and just tasted the the variety that were there anyway we're going back to Grasse um, on this tour and uh, we will be in this area again. So if you are interested in any form of travel, if you're interested in perfumery, if you're interested in going behind the scenes, discovering more about these beautiful French brands, then I'd love you to join us. Send me an email if you wanna see the complete itinerary. We now uh, have the, 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 the complete the day by day, um, what is gonna be happening. I was gonna say the itinerary, the complete itinerary of what is gonna be happening, hotels you'll be staying at. Uh, if you have any questions, dietary requirements, things of that nature, let me know. I'm more than happy to assist you with that. Bada bing. Announcements completed. All right. Have a look at this incredible structure. La Tour Eiffel is celebrating its birthday on the 31st of March. Happy birthday. And this guy is too. So um, I just discovered that the that the tour, La Tour Eiffel and myself celebrate the same day of, um, of the birthday. Um, this year, actually for those who are going to be joining us on the tour, we will be going to Paris and we will have a chance, actually the first time, sorry, we will go to Paris, we will experience, you know, the, the beautiful landmarks of this, of this grand city. Um, the first time I ever saw the, the Eiffel Tower. This was a, like a childhood dream from the age of 16. I always wanted to be in Paris and I wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. I was in my late th or mid 30s. I uh, went to Paris on my own for work. I was working for a, for a French company at that time. And I saw the Eiffel Tower and I started to cry. Um, I just, I don't know, it was almost like, and it's, she's beautiful. If, if you haven't seen the Eiffel Tower, she's, she is beautiful. She's. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's, it's such a sight to see, anyway. Um, so for my birthday, which so happens that La Tour Eiffel is also having its birthday on the 31st of March, um, my wife is taking me to see Dune 2. Now, I thought today for Mate Talk, I'd like to, and this is how my brain works by the way, I'd like to put forward fragrances that each of the characters are wearing um, as part of Dune. So those who haven't seen Dune part one, I'd recommend 
Well, I'm going to give you a lot of spoiler alerts. So massive, massive spoiler alerts. I may say things that if you haven't seen the movie, I'm just going to give away certain parts of it. Um, so I, I, if you want to continue to watch because you want to know what fragrances go to who, then stay with me. But otherwise, be warned that you will be angry at me because I'm going to start delivering uh, certain plots or, or um, giving away certain plots. Now, this is how my brain works. When I see, when I see certain things, I'm like, I wonder what this, what, what would they smell like? Or at that moment, as they come close, and I, for those who saw the interview with um, uh, Renault, I did ask him the question because I remember seeing the movie Amelie, and she smells him, you know. And so I'm like, what's he wearing? I wonder what perfume he's wearing. That she's like, oh man, you smell so good. So. I'm going to talk about fragrances that each of these characters are wearing and see if you agree or disagree with me. I'm cool with that. Just write them down. But let me just say this. This took time. I didn't just grab a couple of fragrances, bada bing. Even to the point I put fragrances against them, like I imagined them first. I'm like, yeah, they would smell like that. I sprayed them, smell them, I'm like, nope, they don't smell like that. So if this took, this whole construct took a little bit of time. And I'll tell you the ones that I, that I struggled on and some that were easy. The first one is Duke Atreides. I love this guy. Oscar is an actor. I love this guy. He's such a great actor. But he's wearing nothing else but Royal Oud. The moment I, I had, uh, when I saw Duke Atreides in the, I'm like, he's wearing Royal Oud. I know he is. I can smell it on him. For those who haven't experienced this divine fragrance, um, this is uh, this is regal. This is uh, masculine. This is uh, it commands presence. It, uh, it's sophisticated. It's it's woody, but it's not. A f it's uh, so it's woody and commanding, but not intimidating. That's the word. So anyone who wears this, you almost feel a sense of confidence of that in that person. And I can see um, Duke Atreides wearing this fragrance and rocking it. Also, the his home. So just so you know, I'm about to. Um, this is Marcelo in fantasy mode. All right. So I'm just gonna. I'm talking about as if this is actually real. But bear with me, this is how my brain works and this is how I, you know, construct my, <laughs> my storylines and whatnot. Um, but in, the, in the, his home planet of Caladan, it's all, it's about the nature. There's the forest and the water and, and there's na he's surrounded by nature. So this fragrance in, embraces and enhances those very, those very points. I know that there are things like on opening, so they're a green, woody, but herbal notes too. So if I'm not mistaken, was it galbanum? I think there is galbanum in the opening. So it has this beautiful green opening to it. I know that there is angelica. And angelica is a very sharp herbal component, but so sharp on that opening, but then it dries off. It does have a beautiful cedar-like quality. Some people challenge that it doesn't have any oud in it. I'm not here to, to argue on that. It does or doesn't. They say it does. I'm going to say that, that what they're saying is right. I don't detect the fecal-like oud quality. So if you want an oud fragrance that has animalic elements to it, this is not the fragrance for you. But if you want something that is very deep wood-like, almost being like lost in a forest, in an aromatic, um, you know, pine trees and cedar, herbal and earth and this is it. This fragrance is magic. So big recommendation as a beautiful masculine fragrance, as a, if some people want a signature scent, this could be your signature scent. The only catch is this. I don't know, and challenge me on this, I don't know if anyone mid 30 and younger can actually pull it off. Um, it's almost, I would say, like wearing a beautiful Armani suit, beautiful material. You look, it looks right, but it's three sizes too big. And sure, you've got an Armani suit on, but it just doesn't fit you. It doesn't look right um, until you grow into it. So I'm, it, to me, it's a, it has, it does have a very distinct, a strong masculine edge to it. Uh, so 30 plus or mid 30 plus, you would rock this. Uh, under that, if anyone is wearing uh, Royal Oud, I'd love to know and see what you think. So now let's talk about his son. So Paul Atreides. He's wearing none other than Santal Ostra because he wants to be like his dad. In that, it is also a wood-based fragrance. So this celebrates the Australian sandalwood. Incredible fragrance. This fragrance, because Paul has grown up on Caladan, which Caladan is a peaceful, a vibrant uh, planet, nation, all the Atreides are. Uh, this, this fragrance is sunshine. 
This fragrance is about happiness. This fragrance actually makes you makes you feel happy. I love wearing this fragrance as a day-to-day, -day, feel good, brings joy into your life. The sandalwood component, those woody components, does ground you. There's a calming sense to the fragrance. It also has things like uh, orris butter, so that creaminess, and also almond milk. So you get this beautiful, creamy opening, mixes so beautifully with that sandalwood. It also has a slight touch of vanilla. And so you're getting this gorgeous, you know, sandal, interpretation of sandalwood. I mentioned before about fragrance houses that like to celebrate notes. Here, the perfumer Aurelien Guichard has uh, grabbed the essence of this Australian sandalwood and then reinterpreted with all these other notes so that you have the complete facet of how he sees this, this, that, this sandalwood. As I mentioned, it's creamy, vanilla touch, but wood and that woody sandalwood is the celebration. Amazing fragrance. So this is what Paul Atreides is wearing on Caladan because he knows nothing else other than sunshine and happiness. I love that one scene where um, Gurney, who's played by uh, Josh Brolin, uh, wants to challenge him and, and you know start doing the first episode. I'm spoiler alert. Uh, actually, it's not a spoiler. But, um, they, they, and he says to me, he says to uh, to Gurney, I'm not in the mood, you know. And Gurney just fires up and I think throws a knife at him at the time. And he says, Well, get in the mood. He goes, he, the, the, the Harkonnens are brutal. And the way he says brutal is spectacular. So that gives you the idea. This fragrance gives you the idea that there is no bad in the world. Everything is beautiful, it's sunshine, it's peaceful. And this is what this fragrance does. It is a beautifully grounding, everything will be all right kind of fragrance. It's, it's, I love it, spectacular, big recommendation if you want as a day-to-day -day office fragrance, long lasting, plays beautifully. But then, however, he goes to Arrakis and in Arrakis he realizes he can't wear this no more. <laughs> this baby is gone because uh, his life has moved on um, Arrakis itself is dry and desolate, there's nothing there. There is no greenery, there's no trees. Um, and he realizes that he has to migrate to something else and so he is now wearing this incredible fragrance by Andy Tower. And it's, let me see if I can pronounce it correctly, Le du Desert Morocain. I want to say it properly. Le, Le du Desert Morocain. Morocain. It's, uh, it's a new inclusion in, in um, my library. It is awesome. This is one that it's hard to go, oh, it's this, oh, it's that. Oh yeah, I can smell a little bit of vanilla. Oh, I can detect this, detect that. So I've got it here. And it, it is the perfect companion to Royal Oud. So I'm telling you, like I said, I put a lot of thought into what are these fragrances. Where Santal Austral, Paul Atreides thought he was being, going, being a little bit more like his dad, the truth is, not so much because Royal Oud commands attention, whereas Santal Austral is more about peace and grounding and, you know, life is cool. Um, whereas Le Du Desert Morcan has so many facets to it, incredibly complex. As a fragrance, I strongly recommend this to you guys. I mean, Tower makes incredible fragrances, period. And this one here moves and dances all around the place. It took me a while to understand what is actually going on because I thought there was incense in this fragrance. There's no incense. And then I thought there was, what was the other? Like the wood-like qualities. The wood-like qualities are definitely there. Um, what it does is it has a, a, a range of, it has a range of uh, herbal, sharp herbal notes. And if not, if I'm not mistaken, I think it has things, actually I wrote it down rather than try to, Beep, boop, boop, boop. That's it. Yeah. So it has the cumin and lavender combination in that opening, and I'm telling you, that is wild. That is like what is going destabilizes you for me at least, because I'm not really like, are we aromatic? Are we spicy? So it's all these these two things are sort of fighting with each other. On the dry down, it does have a very cedar balsamic wood like quality to it. It's interesting. As I've mentioned, Royal Wood and this are very similar in that it has their wood cedar-like quality to it. The difference is this is a lot spicier um, with and, and has this aromatic quality, whereas this is a lot more grounding and a lot more comforting as opposed to, not that this is not comforting, but it's, it, it just, it's a little bit sharper, I think. And, and I think it's those spices that it has in the opening. 
there is a dryness to it too, which I think, and again, if I look at, you know, the, the whole Dune setup, it would fit perfectly. Paul, I can see Paul wearing this in um, Arrakis, you know, this very dry, desolate, but almost like wanting, wishing his homeland of the cedar and the woods and the, that woodland, but knowing that it's gone forever. Anyway, great fragrance. So if you want something that's spectacular, actually when, I, this is a recent inclusion, as I mentioned, um, my son likes to come over constantly to see what new fragrances have uh, are on the shelf and this is one This is Nelson that he cannot stop spraying every time he will he'll walk out and I'm, I'm curious to know What's he smelling like and I'm like are you wearing Marken again? And he's like yeah, he goes I love this fragrance. So if you want something that is Masculine edge, but very complex very diverse really long-lasting or will last well on my skin I'd recommend that one to you boom boom move it on all right, let me just take a small drink and then I'll share the last ones here. What's my time? Yeah. When, so if those who have seen Dune, when they land and the doors open and you see the daylight coming through and everyone's sort of squinting because, you know, the, the, the heat of the sun, the dust is coming in. In that moment, hand on my heart, I thought, I wonder what they're smelling. <laughs> I wonder what's coming through. What are they detecting? Because every place has a smell. So no matter where you go in the world, you can detect something in the air. So I thought Arrakis has got to have a smell. And then you have that scene where there's the dust storm and you see the, the twinkling of the spice that's in the air. And I'm thinking, I wonder if that spice actually has a smell. Does it actually? And I actually thought in my brain, I thought it was incense. It's like an incense that's sort of floating through. Took me a while to go, what does Arrakis smell like? So what does this land smell like? And it, it came to the conclusion that it has to be rose incense. Why rose incense? For those, okay, so first let me just talk about the fragrance. So Amouage, incredible fragrance uh, house for those who are familiar with it. Um, if you are new to Amouage, you can start here. All right, it will blow your brain a little bit because the incense in here is quite pronounced. It's very dominant, but this is a fragrance you will have for the rest of your life. I, you will enjoy this forever. This is an incredible fragrance that you can enjoy during winter. It's an incredible fragrance that brings warmth to your heart. Um, there is a rose note there, but it's a rose absolute. So it's, it's so, not animalic, but there, there's no lightness to it. Unlike, so Mattia Premier have their rose fragrance, which is called Radical Rose. And that has a berry-like, it's happiness also. There's a brightness to it. No, this is deep meditative. This is soul, this is uh, embracing. There is, uh, this is an, just a really like a, a soulful fragrance. I think this is probably the best way to describe it. This fragrance here has frankincense on the opening and in the heart and then myrrh in the base. So incense is its theme all the way through with this beautiful rose note that's in the heart in the center of the fragrance. It does have a thing, uh, a constructed note called uh, suede and all, which is a mixture of suede and leather. Here, sorry, because it'd be interesting to see, I'll, I'm gonna show you with you the, the the two notes here that, that support each other, or the two fragrances. Just gorgeous. The, the rose is always there, and I believe that, so when the spice begins to throw up, the, you know, and then there's a storm and the spice starts to go through the air, uh, that is the rose that's coming through. Uh, the land itself would smell dry, like the incense and the resin that's there, and it's the rose, it's the spice that's going through that then creates the, the, uh, the personality to Arrakis itself. So what does Arrakis smell like? It smells like rose incense. Glorious fragrance, if you haven't experienced it, strong recommendation, things like, also in the base there are things like vanilla and sandalwood and cedarwood I think, so it does have a nice woody base, but never loses the frankincense, incense-y rose touch to it. I can feel my voice is going a little bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna stop because it's about, it's 29 minutes, it's gonna pop on me any minute now, so let me just stop and I'll be right back. <laughs> so what, I was having the break. I looked at it and I'm like, now's a good time to eat it. I did. I ate it. Boom. Okay, let me finish off. I got three more left. Now, the next one is uh, Baron Harkonnen. He's despicable. Baron Harkonnen is a bad guy. Um, he's all about gluttony. I mean, just look at him. He needs a machine to hold him up. 
And so he comes across as completely unrestrained when it comes to his own personal satisfaction. I'm gonna say that, that uh, he has a very strong sexual drive too, so there's no restraint on that either. And so I'm gonna say that he has sex on his mind constantly. We don't see, see it in the movies, but I'm gonna say that that's, that's a part of it. And I, 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 read, I haven't read the book, so I don't know fully, but I did read somewhere that in the books there is a lot of reference that, yeah, he has a fairly high sexual appetite. Um, so he is wearing, obviously, none other than Sado Naso. Um, and this is the Sado Naso that Alessandro Galtieri imagined in his commercial, which is unrestrained sex, unlike if you saw the one that I did, which was more about tender love. One thing that exists with Sado Naso is a level of duality. When some people smell this, and actually, if you watch that episode, uh, have a listen to what I shared about that, but read the comment. A lot of people say, I cannot stand this fragrance because, and this is the duality of it, some people detect this three-day-old urine note. It smells like pee, all right? Other people, in fact, detect a vanilla cookie dough-like quality to it. Thank goodness that when I'm wearing it, I'm only detecting the vanilla cookie dough component to it. I do get like a vanilla-y, uh, not sandalwood, but a vanilla musk. It's just beautiful. Um, anyway, ha watch that episode. You'll be interested to see how this fragrance plays itself out. So, but this fragrance is about sex, regardless whether it's uh, cookie dough or urine. It's about this a very you know primordial uh, or sort of very raw act of of lovemaking. The reason why Baron Harkonnen is wearing this is that to the Harkonnens, they smell one part of this, which is the urine smell, and they love it. They, they smell this, you know, this really intense animalic, and they're like, yeah, you're the boss, man. Whereas his victims, the people who he lures and tricks, and unfortunately, uh, they just fall by the wayside, smell the vanilla cookie dough, and hence why they trust him. So for those who've seen the, the first movie, the doctor who, you know, um, wow, I, I, I was gonna say, I've already, this, I was gonna give you another spoiler, I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, who betrays the, um, the Duke, uh, trusted that, uh, that Baron um, Harkonnen was actually gonna let his wife go, but no, in fact, you know, he's a nasty piece of work. So yeah, he was smelling the cookie dough and so I trusted him, but in fact, he's nothing but, but trouble. So yeah, so he's wearing um, Sado Naso because the, the duality and the, and also because it's all about sex and unrestrained gluttony. Boom. All right, last two. This is for uh, Lady Jessica. This is Paul Atreides' mum, mother. And because she's a witch and uh, she, you know, has this, the insight, uh, she's wearing meander. And the reason why is because meander has two parts of the two worlds that she will coexist in. One, which is Caladan, which has the earthiness, the, 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 you know, the, the rich soil on the opening of Meander has a beautiful carrot seed component. It's very earthy, it's very grounding. It's almost, when, you, when this fragrance opens, what you picture is like misty mountains. It's this beautiful, very earthy, very grounding, very comforting fragrance that you see. Then as the fragrance migrates and dries down, it does go into a frankincense place, which is then becomes her, uh, the land that she's now going to, which is, um, oh my gosh, I, my brain just went south, uh, Arrakis. Uh, so she goes, so frankincense is to celebrate Arrakis. For those who haven't experienced Meander, so the, what I'm saying bottom line is that the fragrance that she started with in Caladan, she can now take across to Arrakis. She's, it's the same fragrance, it's just that it is now in different parts where, she, where it was to where it goes to. And this is what this fragrance does. It does open with this beautiful, very earth-like quality to it, very warm, very embracing. Like I said, misty mountains that you see when it dries down. It does have an incense touch through that frankincense, but it's then supported, I think it has, bop, bop, bing, bing, boom, ah, it has rose and iris butter. So it has that iris. It's really an exceptional, incredible fragrance. If you haven't experienced Meander, this is also under the tenure of um, the talented Renaud Salmon. So this is his, so when he first came on board to Amage, he created a collection called Renaissance. 
Renaissance is all about celebrating core notes of Oman, and in this case, it's the frankincense. If you haven't seen the episode uh, that I did with Renault, he talks about frankincense, how important that note is to Oman, and the work that they are doing to try to, um, you know, create a purity when it comes to the, the sourcing of this core ingredient for perfumery. Meander is spectacular. This is something that, San when I'm wearing it, Sandra loves it. Sandra loves wearing this herself. When we were filming, so here's another episode, we were filming in uh, Springvale alongside Kevin and uh, bumped into an old friend and uh, we were talking, blah, blah, blah. I said, have you smelt this yet? She's like, no, she had a spray. Now, I bumped into her again probably about a week or so ago. This is now four weeks later. She couldn't stop thinking about this. She goes, I cannot stop. What was that perfume that you sprayed on me? Because I, I just, I, I could smell it for like two days and it was just amazing and it was comforting and warm, but at the same time it was vibrant. It had meander. So if you haven't experienced meander, please, I insist, go out. You'll see this duality, that earthy component on its opening migrates across to this frankincense with the rose and the orris butter. It's divine. Anyway, that's what Lady Jessica is wearing both on Caledon and in Arrakis. All right, last one. And this is the important one, this is Chani. You know how long it took me to, to get a fragrance for Chani? Because um, I, I put about two or three, in my mind I thought it was this, and then I thought no, and then when I smelled it, I'm like, nope, she ain't wearing this. Um, I finally settled on the Serge Lutan. This is Ambre Sultan. For those who have not experienced this, did do a video, a lineup of amber fragrances. This was my crowning glory. This is the last one in that lineup. As an amber fragrance, this is the most unique and complex. I love that on the Serge Luton website, he mentions that, so previously, the different fragrance families, we used to use the word oriental. Now, it's now been adopted to amber. I do like the use of oriental. It's not to be derogatory to any nation or anything like that, but oriental signifies that it has spicy components. It has, you know, like think of the orient and, and the spices that drew, that came out of the, um, the spice road and all that sort of stuff. So the Serge Luton website, it says that this is not an oriental fragrance, but uh, how do you say it? Um, it's not oriental, but an Arab. And meaning that it really embraces the the, the region that it's from. It's in celebration of Marrakesh in Morocco, and it's in celebration in particular of the spice markets. So the, the story is that Serge Zutan was walking through the spice markets of Marrakesh and detecting all these different notes, you know, the bay leaf, the cumin, the coriander, uh, all these different um, components there. Um, and he decided to create a fragrance with that. This fragrance here is warm, but not cozy. So sometimes you have amber fragrances that are warm and cozy when, when you want to sit by a fireplace. This is warm, but not cozy. This has a vanilla touch, but it's not a, it doesn't have a vanilla sweetness to it. There is a little bit of that vanilla element, but only very gently. So I can see Chani wearing this. I can see her uh, being in, in Arrakis, who's, which is her homeland, and she is rocking this fragrance. I was hoping that it might have some, some, some rose components, some florals in there. To my nose, I keep thinking that there is some florals in there because I'd be surprised if there isn't. But what I'm detecting, so if anything, I look, and I, and I don't know whether it's imagined inception or just a wish. I do feel that there is a slight rose in there somewhere. The, 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 but the spices, the amber component to it, the, 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 the warmth of the fragrance is divine. This is incredible for a man or a woman, so this is a fragrance that I love to wear, actually. I got this, this, this bottle here is a collector's edition um, of the last tour that we went in um, Paris. We went to the Serge Luton boutique in Palais Royal and had the opportunity to receive this as a gift. It was a gift with purchase, I bought something. And oh, look, let me go, let me say one more. My financier even said it was a good deal. She agreed, so uh, it was a gift with purchase, but this is an incredible fragrance. Uh, this is a limited edition bottle, and this is definitely the one that Chani was wearing, or is wearing, on Arrakis. Boom. <laughs> That's me and my madness, the crazy brain that is Marcelo. 
um, when it comes to when I'm watching a movie that I'm really enveloped in and really I'm looking forward to the IMAX Dune 2. Don't tell me if this movie is good or bad. I'm not, I'm purposely not looking at any uh, reviews or commentary. I want to discover it for myself. Um, but I'm hoping it's spectacular because yeah, in, on IMAX, being surrounded by the, the world of Arrakis and all these characters and this, and, uh, and smelling all these fragrances, I know they'll be wearing this, um, is going to be pretty special. Boom. Thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for your company and I do appreciate uh, all new subscribers that are coming on board. It's awesome to see the growth and I, I thank you for your support. I really do. I really, really thank you for your support. Thanks everyone. We'll see you guys all on the next Monday Talk. Mm -hmm.